Hi, this is the bad boy, Joey Janela, and you're listening to the Going In Raw podcast. Joey Janela always goes in. This is the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and you are listening to Going In Raw. Hey everyone, Kenny Omega here. In case you didn't know, we have an awesome kick butt show called Stephen Larson's Going In Raw, and they're going to be supporting AEW every week amongst many other things. Goodbye and smooch. Good night. Bye bang. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. Yeah, welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found, and of course, taped live at the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. Uh, we're going to be talking about, of course, AEW Dynamite here in a few moments and one huge change made to the AEW All Out card. I know a match that you and I were very much looking very, forward to. Very excited. Seems to be uh, postponed a little Looks while. Uh, but first, uh, huge news broke today while we were recording our uh, NXT review. And we mentioned it at the tail end of the podcast because that's when it was broke. Um, but uh, there seems to be a couple more details about the changes being made to NXT and who might be uh, producing NXT going forward. And it's not Triple H. Uh, before uh, we drop that news on you, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to us right now in the audio realm on your favorite podcast app, do us a favor, leave us a rating, review or a comment really helps going in raw, really helps support the show. Larson, what, what's in that news? So we talked about it uh, briefly during our NXT recap. You just mentioned that uh, just a, mere, a couple moments ago. But to recap that recap, uh, according to Wrestling Observer's Brian Alvarez, Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard will be producing NXT when it resumes live shows on September 14th. Uh, Meltzer, Dave Meltzer, also of Wrestling Observer, he's a Wrestling Observer himself, he is um, the wrestling observer. Added that Vince and Bruce will, quote, be behind the big decisions, not the little ones, and will be, will be behind marketing, promotion, and direction. Their role in booking may only be regarding those at the top. Uh, Andrew Zarian of the Matt Man podcast reached out to his sources, WB, and was told that, quote, Vince has been hands-on and will continue moving forward. Uh, and then finally, Fightful Select. Go subscribe to Fightful Select if you, if you have not reached out to their sources in NXT, and all of them were, quote, effectively left in the dark about the news, though it was noted that, quote, influential producer Jamie Noble apparently had been around uh, the Performance Center a lot more. Additionally, Feifel was told that Bruce Pritchard, the Bruce Pritchard who apparently is going to be producing NXT, was slated to be at the Performance Center this weekend. All right, let's get two groups, A and B. The A group... You're the attraction. The B group, you're, you're going to be the B team. <laughs> you're going to be the B stands for enhancement. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. We haven't, there's never really been much said about Vince's involvement in NXT. You got to figure it's still his company. Uh, but, you know, from everything we've seen, there's always been a, pretty clear delineation there's been a, a, a it seemed a, to be the case that a separation yeah that that triple h was more or less more or less given you know the the latitude to do what he wanted to do in nxt if vince wanted to call somebody up you know that you know he could do that and triple h had to make adjustments accordingly but it's not mm-hmm. like <laughs> excuse me vince was over uh triple h's shoulder you know dictating what the creative had to be for the show well, apparently if this is all accurate that, to a certain degree, is changing. Now, when Nick Khan did the interview with Ariel Hawani, he did say then that the rebrand, the revamp of NXT, was still going to be under Triple H's direction. Um, so I guess day-to-day operations, you know, uh, the, the the little decisions, as, as Meltzer puts it here, those are going to fall to Triple H, I would guess. Yeah. But he's not going to have final say in a lot of things, apparently. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I mean, it... In one way, I mean, look, let's let's seemingly be honest. Bruce Pritchard is seems to be the guy that understands what Vince McMahon wants out of professional wrestling. You would have to think. I mean, you know, given that there was the report, what was it last week or whenever, 
Do you remember it was, it was I forget whose report it was about the power struggle. So it was Meltzer's Wrestling Observer Newsletter talking about the power struggle. Mm-hmm. Look, man, we're on the outside looking in. We well, don't know shit. Nope. But if what we've read, if there's any truth to it, and there is somewhat of a power struggle, Bruce Pritchard seems to be making a play for leading creative once Vince is gone. It's like succession, you know? It's totally what it is. Yeah, yeah. We've been making that analogy for a while. For a while now, yeah. And uh and you know, Bruce is right there in Vince's ear. Hey, hey, Vince, your son in law, he doesn't know what an attraction is. I know what an attraction is. I don't know, man. Who knows what's going on? But uh but yeah, it it's gonna be a very different NXT. I wonder if part of this is Hey, you're you're bringing people up to main roster that don't really fit what my vision of professional wrestling is. You're bringing up people who, who Triple H feels professional wrestling is. Bruce Pritchard understands what I want professional wrestling to be. And this is going to cut out the whole what people complain about with NXT when their favorite gets called up uh, and then is changed to fit Vince and Bruce's vision. Then people complain, oh, I don't know. Now you're going to get the crappier version just from the beginning. Immediately, yeah. yeah. Immediately, you're going to be yeah. introduced to the crappy version so you won't complain when they... Now, on the flip side of that, you won't have to complain about them being crappier because you won't know them as being any better. You'll be used. All you'll know <laughs> is the crap version. You won't know the good version. And there will... They're, they're, there should be at that point some amount of continuity, which is one thing we've always wanted. Continuity between NXT Not and main exactly roster. Not exactly how we want it to happen, but yeah, it seems like there's a pretty distinct possibility that that could be the case. Um, let me ask you a question. This is something I've mm-hmm. thought about, and this is just pure speculation. There's, there's no evidence Good. to su- yeah. suggest anything. Well, maybe some circumstantial, but a little bit. Anyways, um, so... WWE, obviously the ratings are, are, are not that great. Although Raw did pretty well this week. Yeah, they're, they're seeing a terms. rebound. They're seeing a rebound these um, days from pandemic. So. <laughs> um, you know, but by and large, people dump all over WWE's creative. It's not very good. Yeah, sure. And and do you think that maybe this kind of uh, Vitz, uh taking over NXT, if you will, to a degree, is a response to that, and it's easier for Vince to say, "Okay, well, my 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 developmental system is not giving me what I want." Rather than reflect and think, "Hmm, maybe I, as the creative head of WWE, you know, because regardless of what Bruce Pritchard's title is, Vince drives creative." Yeah, sure. Um, rather than Vince, so Vince, rather than look in the mirror and say, "Okay, maybe I'm not giving my viewers what they really want," WWE's primary troubles are creative, not in terms of the talent level in the ring. Mm-hmm, yeah, sure. Like in the ring. Performers out in front of the cameras, you could make the case very easily that the roster has never been better. You can make the case that WWE main roster has the best roster on the planet. Yes. Absolutely. If, the, if left to their own devices, yes. they could put on they could put on absolutely the same matches that you see in New Japan or AEW totally, or totally. anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, the the talent level on the on the main roster is is off the charts. It's ridiculous mm-hmm. the amount of talented people on that roster. So, anyways, my point is. Rather than Vince looking at himself in the mirror and saying, maybe I'm the problem. Again, he's saying, oh, this is the problem because people aren't tuning in because they're expecting the what? The attraction. Thank you. Yeah. It's possible. I mean, you know, you and I, we've always, we've always felt that if things were going to, if things were getting bad, Vince would never think that it was him. No. He would say, oh, I'm not doing enough. That sounds like a Vince thing. Well, I sleep four hours a night. Uh, I work out like a madman. Uh, I work endlessly, but it's still not enough. I need to do more. Um, that sounds like something he would do. Um, much easier than than you know say. Well, maybe somebody else could do pro wrestling better than me. He's Vince McMahon. He thinks he is pro wrestling. So yes. obviously, adding Vince McMahon to the equation is probably what he'd prefer. And if Bruce Pritchard aligns with that vision more than his own son-in-law. Which seems to be the indication. Then Bruce Pritchard, guess what, everybody? When it comes time for Vince McMahon to step down, Bruce Pritchard is going to be running your WWE. That's what's going to happen. And Nick Khan will be totally in line with that. And then they'll just have to deal with it. And then whatever happens, happens. Triple H will 
do whatever he's going to do. I don't know what he's yeah, going to do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because, I mean, that, the, the, the idea just popped in my head is like, you know, Vitz, he doesn't see, you know, like, say, this use the ratings as a metric. He doesn't see the ratings he wants. Well, what's the problem? Is Vince going to think the problem is me or is the problem five other things that really aren't the problem? You know, <laughs> you know, because the yeah. talent is there on the main roster yeah, right now. The talent is yeah. there in NXT to put on the absolute best weekly wrestling program imaginable. The mm-hmm. talent in terms of the performers is thousand percent there right now. Yeah. The problem is that this is that Vince just doesn't know how to to use that talent to their utmost potential. Do you, and here's the thing, if you want to know what Bruce Pritchard is going to be like, <clears throat> if, if what he is like as a creative mind, all you got to do is listen to, the, to his podcast with Conrad. Yeah, Thompson. it's not encouraging. It's not, but it is very illuminating. Yes. You know, I mean, if you want to know, it's all out there. He talks about, for example, when they're, they're talking about Kevin Nash or they're talking about Diesel, you know, he talks about the biggest mistake they made and he pushed back against it was... <clears throat> was making Diesel a relatable human. You, nobody wanted to know who Kevin Nash was. They wanted Diesel. Well, actually, if you look at what Kevin Nash did in WCW, he was far more relatable. I mean, I don't know what the metrics are, but I feel like I, I prefer his run in WCW because okay. he just came off as much yep. more relatable there. Question then. So what is diesel's character is he literally just a semi are we i think think he's the personification of a semi truck is that what we're really supposed to think he he viewed diesel as an unstoppable monster that people could could root on because he did cool stuff and kevin nash as a guy who washed out of division whatever college basketball at university of tennessee i believe yeah because of like bad knees or whatever or bad back. I forget what the injury was. These, I thought I could be wrong. Okay. Um, and I, I listened to this a couple of months ago, but, uh, but that was basically it. He said, doing a sit down interview with the guy where he referred to him as Kevin Nash. And he talks about being a former basketball guy and he wasn't at like the top of his profession or the top of, you know, it's not like he came out of college balls, like a champion yeah, yeah, yeah. and then graduated on to WWE. It's then he went to, he, he didn't think that that was something people wanted. And he felt that that was, the beginning and the end for the for the diesel character, um, and I would I would I I found that kind of stuff with Kevin Nash much more compelling than anybody Definitely, else because he's a captivating presence on camera when he just talks, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I mean, that's the kind of guy that you're dealing with when you deal with Bruce. That's why that's why you have sort of more cartoony characters on the main roster, mm-hmm. um, and they rely on catchphrases and gimmicks as opposed to like you know characters and motivations, like three dimensional and stuff. characters with with yeah. depth and complexity. Yes. Yeah. Um, I wonder. I I wonder. You know, th- this could this might fit into what you're saying. Hmm. I wonder if Vince looks at all the hullabaloo about CM Punk returning mm-hmm. and sees that. The uh, uh, AW ratings, they went up. I mm-hmm. mean, for Rampage, they went up significantly, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he's been able to raise Raw's ratings a little bit. SmackDown's ratings have been up. And AW still, even with all the hullabaloo and all this and that, they still manage about half of yeah. what WWE does. And yeah. maybe he thinks to himself, they can't touch me. <laughs> it's a, more of me. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to help everything. That could be. That could be. You, you know, know, I think you're. I think you're right. When when Vince sees difficulty or sees issues, I, th- I think he probably thinks the solution is more Vince. Yeah. You know, and as you mentioned, yeah, he sleeps four hours a night. Well, if I need to do more, I guess I'm getting by in three hours of sleep. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, I just don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like that's necessarily the case. I don't think we need more Vince. Yeah. But, you know, it seems like the. And I know NXT's ratings weren't good. They weren't, which is why they moved off. When the re- I mean, they may not say that, but they got moved off Wednesday nights nice because they they're were not AW. terrible. Yeah, they're not terrible compared to you know, the other stuff on TV at that time spot. They yeah, the rating yeah this week they did like seven hundred and seventy, uh, which yeah. I think was up from last week. And this week wasn't a great episode. And it's not like is NXT seems to not really be allowed to get much buzz. Uh, like exactly. they're taped, they're taped episodes. Yeah. They run spots on raw or whatever, but it's not like they're really permitted by WWE to get much buzz because like of what's been going on lately. Um, and so 
I don't know. Hey, maybe a complete revamp just from a car wreck perspective. People will be like, hey, I'm going to tune into this. Maybe they'll get 900. Well, it's going to take it's going to take WB promoting this rebrand beyond just running that that little uh, video package. So if people are even aware that this rebrand is happening, if Vince and Bruce are in charge and yeah, part of that fight for select thing, they'll push the hell out of it. Then, yeah. And Triple A is going to be sitting there. Where was this? I know when I needed it. I know. Well, now Vince and Bruce want to prove that they're, you know, oh, their formula works because then now they're just going to put the right amount of marketing into it. I know. Which they should have been doing the entire time. Exactly. If they had really followed through on something interesting after the the NXT invasion around Survivor Series. I know. Like actually know. develop that to a story. I know. Past Survivor Series with it more crossover. Been pretty great. It could have been it pretty been cool. Great. You could have if, seen NXT do really well. If they would I mean imagine if they had had Rhea win at, at WrestleMania even. I know. And that doesn't that doesn't kill Charlotte. That doesn't no. kill her. No. Imagine if that happens. People people watch that stuff and they're like, "Whoa." They can. They're on the same level. Well, I'll keep on tuning in. It's a little bit by bit thing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. So. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I'm. I'm. Look. I'm. If I want to watch the great matches of the past, I'll watch the great matches of the past. But that time is done. And maybe. Hey. Maybe. Uh. uh Parker Boudreaux and and Rick Steiner's son can do some cool stuff. And I just. You know. Maybe. I'll, maybe we'll figure that one out. We'll uh, see. We'll see. Let's take a quick break here to get a word from our sponsor, Better Help. Several years ago, while dealing with severe anxiety, I learned the importance of talking to a therapist, but also discovered that it can be extremely difficult to find the right person to talk to. Today, BetterHelp is providing a safe and private online environment where your needs will be assessed and you'll be matched with your own licensed personal therapist. BetterHelp isn't a crisis line, nor is it self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online, all without having to ever sit in another uncomfortable waiting room. BetterHelp is dedicated to facilitating great therapeutic matches. Send your counselor messages at any time or schedule regular phone or video sessions. And they've made it free and easy to change therapists if needed. And you don't have to limit yourself to counselors in your area. BetterHelp services are available worldwide so you can find the expertise you need regardless of location. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a Going In Raw listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor, at betterhelp.com slash raw. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash raw. Before we get back to the show, let's get a word from our sponsor, Craig. You know, Steve, I feel like I want to take up a new hobby. I want to start making stuff out of wood with these hands of mine, but I honestly have no idea where to start. Where do I start? Ah, All right, so you want to get into woodworking, eh? That's right. I was once like you, man, feeling the urge to craft something with these hands of mine, but unsure if I could do so. But then I got these hands on a Craig Pocket Hole Jig 520 Pro. Craig has been the innovator and leader in pocket hole joinery, setting the standard for 30 years now. And now, if I got my Craig Pocket Hole Jig 520 Pro and a drill, I feel like I could build nearly anything from bookcases to desks to outdoor patio furniture. Really? Yeah. Wow. Tell me more then, please. Sure, no problem. See, pocket hole joinery is a way of creating fast, simple, and strong joints in a variety of wood projects. And the Craig Pocket Hole Jig 520 Pro makes it easier than ever. You know me, Larson, I've never been terribly handy. And the thought of building something out of wood with these hands of mine seemed like a pipe dream. But after going to craigtool.com, that's K-R-E-G tool.com, and getting my hands on a Craig Pocket Hole Jig 520 Pro, I can build pocket hole projects anytime, anywhere. Wow, that's impressive. That's really impressive. I got a question no. for you, though. Okay. I could use a bookcase right there, right there on that wall. Can you build a yeah, bookcase right so there. I can put in that wall right behind me? Can you do that for that me, wall? please? That wall right there? You want a bookcase? Yes. No. You know why? Why? Because you could do it yourself. Oh. Now anyone, even Larson, can easily create perfect and strong pocket hole joints with the Craig Pocket Hole Jig 520 Pro. It works with a wide variety and size of material and is great for building all types of indoor and outdoor wood projects. The Craig Pocket Hole Jig 520 Pro comes with everything you need and retails for just $99.99. It's available nationwide at Home Depot, Lowe's, and other home centers, woodworking, and hardware stores. Learn more at craigtool.com. That's K-R-E-G tool.com. Again, that's craigtool.com. K-R-E-G tool.com. 
this was uh, before we get into our uh, uh, go home dynamite uh, episode all out uh, a match between Pac and Andrade. It's been po- postponed. Uh, Tony Khan tweeted this out. Yep. Thank you to fans supporting AW Dynamite Live next on TNT. The Women's Casino Battle Royale, which was booked on the buy-in, will now be featured on the all-out pay-per-view card. Due to travel issues, Pac versus Andrade is postponed until a future AEW rampage. Uh, as you uh, mentioned in the tease, uh, we were looking forward to this bout yeah. um, quite a bit. Uh, it's good to know that uh, hopefully it'll still happen on an AEW rampage. Um, and while this match isn't happening and it's a bummer, I'm happy to, to see that the Casino Battle Royale is getting moved up to the main card. It probably should have been there to begin with. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wonder what's going to replace it on the kickoff. Oh, they the announced that tonight on Dynamite. Oh, it's uh, Best Friends and Jurassic Express taking on the Hardy Family Office. Oh, okay. That's cool. Right on. That should be fun. Um, that's yeah, <laughs> that's a match. Uh, anyways. Uh, Dynamite tonight uh, featured. So it was the go-home Dynamite. We still have a Rampage, which really is an additional hour of Dynamite in terms of More its yes. importance. It's canon, um, yeah. It's canon, totally. It's not, it's not, it's early Thunder levels, not late Thunder levels, thank goodness. Uh, and uh, yeah, I thought it was, it was a packed show. Um, I'm, I'm trying to look and see. I mean, in terms of informing us as to what to expect from all out my early prediction on that of course we're going to do our predictions after yes. our rampage review yes. or as within, part of our within, rampage yes. probably to kick off our rampage review yeah yeah um here's my guess this is my best guess tonight was the go home segment so the the main event segment saw uh, the Gallows and Anderson and Lucha Brothers. I'm sorry, Gallows Anderson and the Young Bucks versus Lucha Brothers and Jurassic Express. Mm-hmm. I thought this would give us a lot of info here, and it kind of did because it ended with uh, the Young Bucks uh, uh, winning, or the, that team, the Elite, winning mm-hmm. uh, over the good guys. And uh, Kenny comes down, brings down, uh, or Christian comes in. There's like a big they attack the the, the yeah, good guys. Yeah, brawl that breaks out. Yeah, yeah. There's a big brawl. Christian comes in, tries to make the save. Then once Christian's in the in the cage, Christian cage is in the cage. Uh, Kenny bring Kenny comes out. He brings the cage down, mm-hmm. and all the faces try to make the save, and they can't. They keep on getting repelled by you know Cutler and his and his cold spray mm-hmm. and kendo sticks and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And so Kenny handcuffs the he has them all handcuff the good guys, and they do a big beat down thing. And so I feel like. This was the go-home segment for the tag match. Mm-hmm. The go-home segment for the title match, the, the world title match, is going to actually take place maybe in the main event segment on Rampage. So probably the main event of Rampage is going to be Darby versus Daniel Garcia. I would guess that's going to be the main event. And it's probably going to be 2.0 attacking Darby after the match. Punk, Punk running save. down to make the save. End the show with a stare down between Punk and Darby. That would be Since my you, guess. You think that's going to be the main event still? Yeah, based on what they the announced, the, the card was going to be because it, it was Malachi versus Lee Johnson, uh, Darby versus uh, Daniel Garcia, and then there was one yeah. more uh, match that's escaping me right now. I apologize. I should have what For Rampage, is going to be a two on one uh, uh, Brit, right. uh, Brits people, uh, Rebel that's and right. uh, Hater versus like Statlander. Statlander. That's the third yeah. match. Thank you. So those are the three matches. Now, that's not to say they can't have some sort of backstage segment with Kenny that involves Christian. Um, Nonetheless, here's the thing about go-home math. It's not 100%. No, but... But there is... I mean, there is a solid philosophy to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There is a solid philosophy to it, and I I do think that a beatdown of this degree, if the Lucha Brothers don't get theirs against the Young Bucks... On the next one uh, on Rampage, yeah, I kind of feel like that's going to be the next shoe to drop for the Super Elite as the Young mm-hmm. Bucks losing that those titles. Mm-hmm. Um, Jurassic Express, they had their they had their tag title shot, yep, didn't they? they did. Yeah, they had they their did. tag title shot. Um, a lot of people were talking about FTR versus Pro, uh, Santana and Ortiz tonight, uh, saying they want the next thing for Santana Ortiz to be. Tag title shot. Well, number one, they ain't ranked. 
and AEW cares about that. Uh, FTR is ranked, but they're ranked at like number four, I think. Yeah. And uh, and they're one and one. This mm-hmm. doesn't need titles. They're going to have another match. It's going to yep. probably happen in New York where yep. the mm-hmm. crowd is going to be huge yep. for Santana Ortiz. Yep. We sort of saw this. We yeah, sort of yeah, yeah. saw this coming. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, the other kind of uh, uh, math we might have saw tonight was when it comes to the Women's Casino Battle Royale. Uh, Thunder Rosa was supposed to, have, was supposed to have an interview. It was interrupted by Nyla Rose and Jade Cargill. They kind of temporarily formed an alliance to, to, to beat up Thunder Rosa, and then they kind of set, them si- set their sights to each other. Mark Sterling got in, in between them and said, hey, let's save this for Sunday where the money's at. So it's entirely possible we're going to see uh, two things happen. Thunder Rosa is probably going to win because there's a built-in story with her against Britt. And I don't think Britt's yeah. beat Thunder Rosa yet. Um, I would actually counter that because it's funny because I texted you during the Thunder... I texted you before the Thunder Rosa thing, but you text me back during uh, it. Oh, okay. Anna Jay is winning that battle royal. Oh, yeah, she could. Anna Jay is totally winning because she's... She could. Total baby face. Well, so is Thunder Rosa, obviously. Yeah. But I think it's like it's too early for Thunder Rosa. I think she's going to have a thing with Jade Cargill, which is great for both of them. Well, I was going to say, I think Jade's going to have a program with Nyla Rose. They'll do a I mean, thing a where they eliminate each other from the Battle Royal or something like that. And then they'll get. Oh, into I mean, a like, story. I mean, yeah, that, that totally could be. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the program with Jade is going to be more of a. Is going to be more of a face versus heel thing. Yeah, they could totally do that. They could totally do Nyla. I just feel like Nyla is kind of usually an afterthought, and I feel like she'll end up being an afterthought here. But Jade versus Thunder Rosa as a program really elevates both of them, uh, depending on how the wins and losses square up. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, I mean, because no, look, if it's Thunder Rosa versus Nyla Rose, you know Thunder Rosa is getting the better of that one. Yeah. If it's Thunder Rosa versus Jade Cargill, I, they, they might have to split that, and Jade might have to take the uh, the the split there. But yeah, I know. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure this how you do another that. Another reason math. why I think it's going to be Nyla and, and Jade coming out of the Battle Royal. This could be the 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 story as the feud. Yeah, yeah. I think Thunder Rose is a little too early, and Brit is really popular as a bad guy. So mm-hmm. she can be like a good guy and a bad guy, but mm-hmm. she's really popular. And I'm not sure if they want to mess with that. Anna J is popular, but she's also like. She's number one. She's not going to be ranked for a really long time mm-hmm. because she's she literally came back tonight. Yeah, yeah. After being and out so, for like six, eight months, something like that. It was a while. Yeah, she's been gone for a while. But you want to capitalize on her being back. And so I feel like she wins this thing. Huge pop for her. She can have a title match with uh, Britt, I don't know, three weeks from now or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or two weeks. Or the two weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Uh, two weeks after all out. And. She gets through that, and then she's just sort of on her normal course of whatever they're going to do. Her and uh, 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 Ty Conti can take on Bunny and yeah, Penelope yeah. Ford a couple times, something like that. Um, so that's just that's what I'm thinking right now. We'll, we'll get some more info on that. I do feel like it's it's got to be one of those in terms of like the players involved, Thunder Rosa, uh, Anna J. I I think those are probably two really strong contenders yeah, to yeah, win, yeah, yeah. or it could be a Joker, could be Ruby Soho, mm-hmm. uh, could be – I doubt – I doubt – if it's going to be Cassie Lee or uh, uh, Jessica McKay, Jess, Jess McKay, I doubt either of them are going to win it, although it would not shock me at all if they debuted at uh, mm-hmm. the Battle Royal. Mm-hmm. Totally. Totally. Anyways, want to dive right into it? Let's dive right into it. Sure. Show kicked off with what we actually thought was going to be the main event. Uh, FTR versus Santana and Ortiz. Really good match. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't wait till the rubber match. Yeah. Uh, some sort of stipulation is going to be probably pretty insane. Oh, uh, they're going to be wearing the jeans. Street fight, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, about halfway through, FTR is going for a double suplex. Santana breaks it up with a spear on Dax. And that allows Ortiz to roll up cash. Gets a two there. Uh, uh, Santana Ortiz set up for their finish. Uh, Dax pushes Santana off the top rope. And then Cash hits Ortiz with the gory bomb. That gets a two count. Dax gets the tag in. He puts Ortiz on the top. He's looking for the, they're looking, uh, FTR is looking for the power slam splash combo they do all the time. Mm-hmm. Santana gets in the way of Cash hitting the splash, you know, at the right time. So Dax hits the superplex. Cash is late going for the splash. He misses. Ortiz hits an Insigiri. But then he eats the shatter machine from FTR. And then Santana breaks that up with a splash off the top onto Dax, I believe, which then knocks Dax into the cover. 
Anyway, Santana gets the, the tag in. He hits a rolling cutter on Cash. Uh, Ortiz falls with a code breaker with a leap off the top rope. And I don't know what the move's called, but it's uh, 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 Santana Ortiz hit this kind of like they flip their opponent over so they kind of get land, uh, you know, chest first on the mat. It was like one of those. It was like a rever- like a reverse double power bomb kind of because that's kind of how a reverse yeah, power yeah. bomb goes and you have somebody on your shoulders and you just launch them backwards yeah, yeah, like yeah. this. Yeah, and they yeah, hit that on, like that on on Cash Wheeler to get the win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was really terrific match, mm-hmm. and the, cr- the crowd was. This was the, probably the biggest reaction was this match. Um, the crowd sort of they died down a little bit, a little bit later into the. I mean, the, honestly, like once you got into Orange, I mean, there was there was a lot of stuff here. Like if you look after the punk stuff, which the crowd was good for. Yeah, I feel like the I feel like the crowd was bigger for the FTR LAX match. The though. crowd was into the uh, the Ty Conti Penelope Ford match. Yeah, they were into that because if you look down the street, I mean, right here towards the, I don't know, I guess we're still in the first, yeah, in the first hour. Because then you got like the MJF interview, which was fine. You have Orange Cassidy versus Jack Evans, which the whole thing was kind of a mess. Yeah, that was uh, weird. You got promos, which for us is great with Kingston and Miro, but for the crowd, they're just watching a screen. Mm-hmm. Jericho in the ring promo. There's a yeah, lot Cage of video. Versus, there's a lot of video packages too. A lot of video packages. You have Cage versus Hobbs, which I'm sorry, like I'm into this because I love Team Taz and I love Hobbs. Yeah, Hobbs is great. But like Team Taz, besides Hook, really doesn't have much going on with the fans. I feel like the fans just really like Hook <laughs> for like you know kind of silly reasons. Um, but uh, but yeah, like the crowd didn't really have a whole lot to sink their teeth into here until geez until. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Ty Conti Penelope Ford, and then like, I mean, what are they supposed to get up for Big Show getting called out by plugs, and then like a weird <laughs> Billy Gunn turn? Yeah, that was weird. That was weird. Uh, so, anyways, after that, we had a 2.0 and Danny Garcia promo. Uh, Matt says uh, Darby might have Punk on his mind, but don't look past Danny Garcia. Uh, Parker says he's excited, but not for the the the, the Punk Allen match because I'm going to take that match away from the fans. And then uh, Garcia says uh, he's going to hurt Darby on Friday, and there's no way he's going to make it to All Out. And uh, they try to do that uh, here with Phil and his promo. CM Punk comes out, says, uh, oh, boy, I'm nervous about Sunday. I haven't wrestled in seven years. Dare I say I'm scared. So I'm promising every time I come down that aisle, every time I lace up the boots, and then Garcia and 2.0 attack CM Punk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Garcia gets to be the first person to put hands on uh, on CM Punk. Yeah, I'm not they mistaken. seemingly think very highly of, of Daniel Garcia 2.0. I hear nothing but amazing things about. It. I got to go back and look on YouTube for some of his Same. matches because Same. I hear that he's like yeah, he's, everybody loves the guy. He's instantly pushed to really high profile stuff. You know, they're in the thing mm-hmm. with Fox and now Darby and Sting and now Punk. Anyways, so <clears throat> excuse me. So Daniel Garcia 2.0. They're they're laying into Punk. Uh, it's a pretty decently uh, uh, decent like beat down. Darby and Sting eventually come out though to make the save. Uh, you got Punk. He's in the corner hitting uh, some punches on Parker. Uh, hits him with the GTS while Sting hits Matt Lee with the Scorpion Death Drop. Darby's hitting Daniel Garcia with the Coffin Drop, and then Punk and Darby get face to face in the ring. Sting kind of paces around a little bit, gets on the mic, uh, and before he talks, Punk's like, "Hold on." He tosses Parker out. Sting says, "Hey." hey Always wanted to share the ring with you, Phil. You know their paths never crossed, but this was that was then. This is now. Speaking of now, felt good to see a GTS happen before my own eyes. Felt good to clear traffic. They don't want anything to stop the match from happening on Sunday. And speaking of traffic, that includes me. I'm gonna give Darby a fist bump, and I'm gonna walk back to the locker room. So when they collide, it'll be one on one, and it'll for sure be showtime. And so Punk gets right back in Darby's face. Cult personality hits and Darby leaves. This is how you use legends. This was awesome. It was great. It was a little surreal to see all this universe mode stuff happening before our eyes. Um, Denise Salcedo said something like, yeah, I don't know what my uh, bingo card is going to include for 2022, but it's going to be balls out. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, you know what my response to that was? I saw what it was. Kevin Steen versus Jericho is going to main event all out next year. That's going to happen. It's totally going to happen. Pessimistic about that. But, uh, uh, <laughs> hey, another a little note about this. Did you notice? I, maybe they had done this before, but they killed Darby's intro yeah. to his song for the run in. I did notice that. 
It's good stuff. I did notice that. I did notice that. Um, I like that Sting guy on the mic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in terms of just saying, I'm not going to be ringside because I don't need to be there ringside. Mm-hmm. You know, and he acknowledged, if I'm there ringside, I'm going to take away from the match. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. more or less. Yeah. And by doing that, by saying, I'm taking away from the match by being out there, I'm not going to be there, you build the match up even yeah, right. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so. wonder, like, I, the only my only critique on this, and it's a small one, is a little bit more back and forth between Punk and Sting would have been neat, just from a fan's perspective. But like Punk said, there's plenty of time for that kind of stuff. He even called out Sting, so maybe we'll get that. I maybe thought, we'll get I that. It could be fun. Yeah, yeah, I thought when Sting started, you know, he was like saying, Hey, that felt good. Punk, you did this. I did this. Darby did this. We all did this. We, you know, clearing the traffic. I was like, oh, is he going to pitch a six-man tag match with Rampage? <laughs> Punk's first match can't be on Rampage. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was I was like, oh, is he going to have like a tune-up match on Rampage? Is that what's going to happen here? Um, yeah, no, I was, I was actually thinking when Garcia attacked, I was like, are they going to do Punk versus Garcia first on Rampage? Not remembering that they had Allen versus Rampage or Allen versus Garcia on Rampage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, that'd have been good. I like. I know he's talking about. Let's talk about uh, clearing traffic. Uh, I'm like Sting. You just had to clear three guys. Like maybe you should be at least at the entrance to make sure nobody shows up. But yeah, that's a fair whatever. point. That's whatever. That's going to be that's going to be a killer match. You're not going to have any right. shenanigans for that one, man. Yep. That's going to be off the hook. Yep. Uh, after this, uh, we had an MJF interview. I sort of, uh, got the cliffs notes here because MJF was doing a Steve Brule with all those camera cuts and he was talking really fast and it was, yeah, he was talking so fast, but here's the thing. He was keeping up with those camera cuts. Like he was anticipating them. I mean, this is probably all mapped out and everything, but man, he was going full speed and then this, and then this. So like a little bit on the hokey side comparing Jericho extending his career in the same way Muhammad Ali did and calling him out for the Parkinson stuff. A little tacky. Yeah, tacky. Probably a little bit more in tacky. Uh, not a great look, but he's a bad guy. It's kind of what they do. Uh, he says, because he mentions that Muhammad Ali boxing too many matches, he broke his body and his brain because he was addicted to the spotlight. Uh, so uh, MJF, because Jericho is addicted to that same spotlight, he will have the honor of ending one of the greatest runs in the history of pro wrestling. He said it's going to be ironic. That same yearning that brought you to the spotlight is going to be the reason the dream dies. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had Orange Cassidy versus Jack Evans. This is kind of an odd match uh, in so much as the uh, the finish happened during a picture-in-picture commercial break. I don't know if this is a, a, a something like <laughs> yeah. a timing of something or if they really wanted uh, the beat down. And the save being made by uh, Jurassic Express to be the primary focus, which actually wouldn't surprise me, uh, simply because they don't do a whole lot with Jack Evans. They probably think Orange Cassie being beating Jack Evans that's the anticipated result. So we'll just do a roll up win for Orange Cassie during during picture in picture. But then afterwards, when Hardy comes out and then Jurassic Express comes out, then we're setting a match for all out. You're no, you're exactly right because like. Jeff Hardy, I'm sorry, Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy, <laughs> debuted on debuted on Dynamite because Matt Hardy opens this entire thing with a with a beat down. And then as soon as it's over during commercial, and I think as we're coming out of commercial, you see Hardy attack him. Um, so that's clearly what the focus was here, like yes. you said, to, to set up that match. So, yes, yeah. totally. Uh, then we get a uh, Eddie Kingston promo. Uh, he says Miro called himself God's favorite champion. But why is the DDD, DDT Miro seemingly his kryptonite? I'll tell it's you why. Neck. It's in the neck. And in I'm neck. going after that neck. And he says if he takes the TNT title, then Miro won't be God's favorite champion anymore. Yeah. And says, uh, take my hand. We'll go through hell together. Maybe afterwards you can go visit your God. Yeah. Ooh. And then I just have written here, Miro responds, I'll let Larson do this one. I, I didn't catch all of it because it, I, I, it's hard for me to transcribe what Miro says because I just want to watch Miro. You just want you know, to soak in Miro. I just want to soak in Miro. So he says Eddie's talking about DDTs and kryptonite, but Miro only stays down with his wife in a hotel room. Yeah, man. After after a win championships. Yeah. Yeah, it was good stuff. Talks about getting down. After that, we had a really good Mox Kojima video package. These yeah. video packages are so great, man. Yeah, they did. They great. did a great job on them all night. Yeah. Can you imagine those fools used to script Mox. 
<laughs> he used to be scripted. <laughs> That's so bad. I know. It's like because th- this kind of stuff, especially like you look. Know, sometimes Mox can be a bit aimless and rambling when he doesn't have something to chew on. I really like this. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go and kill this old man stuff. I it, like this. It's really fun. A lot of it. A lot of the, the the his lines were from his promo last week when he announced the match. Yeah, it was really good too. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm looking to execute him and break his neck and stuff like that. Whoa, yeah. buddy, chill out. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had uh, Jr. Uh, I don't get to do this a whole lot. It looked like, like he was getting crying. emotional. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, here he is, Chris Jericho, and uh, Jericho starts off with uh, 29 years ago, just down the street. <laughs> it's like, okay, everybody, settle in. So uh, anyway, the talks about his here a bit. Yes. Yeah. Talks about him having a pass with Jr. Jr. asks, "Well, why, why are you putting your career on the line?" Jericho says, "Well, first, let me say this." MJF, you're a piece of shit. All you have on me is three victories. And he lists them all in the dates. He says, they're burned into my brain. He says, that's why I have to take the chance and beat you. I've never been complacent. I don't want to be complacent. Three years ago, there was no guarantee we were going to be a success here in AEW. But here we are in episode 100. I could key and give me the hottest wrestling promotion there is. He's like, I could keep going, having matches here. But I always know I couldn't beat MJF. Then I would know it would be the beginning of the end. I don't want it to stop. I'm Chris Jericho. I'm the best, and you don't have the balls to stop me. I'll see you on Sunday, you little prick. Yeah. I, I went into uh, Frank Costanza there for a little bit. You did. You did. Uh, I'll then see we you had, on Sunday. <laughs> then we had a, a CM Punk Darby Allen video package. This did have new interview footage with Darby Allen. This He's, is good. Yeah. I like he it. says, When I was 15, guess what? Punk was my favorite wrestler. And when mm-hmm. Punk left seven years ago, that's when I started wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so the timeline just really aligns there, doesn't it? It really does, yeah. Um, says uh, he should have he should have been first on Punk's list. He should have been the last, but now he has to do the impossible: beat Punk in Chicago or die trying. Well, he's not going to die, but he's going to he's going to lose. He is going to lose. He's not going to die. Yeah. No. Uh, after that, we oh man, I was I was so happy about this. We had Heck Powerhouse yes. Hobbs with some killer like Harlem Heat inspired. Great gear like a single it looked amazing fantastic uh versus uh brian cage and uh hobbs uh dominated a lot of the early goings of this match cage hits a flat liner uh during the match shivani mentioned something about Britt baker tweeting about a free agent <laughs> he's like how to get backstage uh hobbs hits a big spine buster on cage but cage comes back with an f5 uh and then uh hook gets on the apron I'm sorry, no, Hobbs gets on the apron, he gets suplexed back in, then Hook gets yeah. on the apron, yeah. distracts the ref, and then uh, uh, Hobbs sends Cage into the ropes on the other side of the ref, and that's when Ricky Starks there with the FTW title blasts Cage in his dumb head, and Hobbs hits his finish for three, Great. gets that huge win for powerhouse Great. Hobbs. I was so Team excited. Taz, and Taz at commentary says, hey, the plan worked exactly as it should have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was super excited for that. See Hobbs get yeah. that win. That was That's great. good stuff. That's good stuff. I just man, Hobbs is good, man. I don't know. He is. I'm just I don't really see I don't see it with Cage. I'll be honest with you. I don't see it with Cage. Don't see it with them. Don't yeah. see it with don't see it with Brian Cage. Don't see it with Christian Cage. I'm an anti Cage. Well, I mean, Christian Cage is a is a Hall of Fame caliber wrestler. Uh, after that we had a Malachi Black promo. Um he's talking to Lee Johnson and, Lee. Uh, and he says, Lee, you say Lee. I left the ring. Uh, because I was afraid. No, I left the ring because I'll dictate when we fight. The show was over. That's why I left. Yeah, the show was over, exactly. <laughs> Since then, uh, it says he's given Lee seven days to atone for his actions. He says, I granted mercy on Cody and Brock, but Lee won't be so lucky, and at the end of it, he'll place a coin on each of his eyelids, so when he goes to Hades, he could pay the toll. Ooh. That's that's a really good, really good video. I wonder if he puts these together himself because they're really good. Could be. Uh, After that, uh, Plugs comes out with the Plug Club, and uh, with a couple of new, uh, with a few new members. I'm guessing they're just local talent to take a take some uh, punches and choke slams from uh, Paul White here. I'm assuming so. I have no idea who these dudes are, man. I don't. I don't watch. Never seen them. Never seen them. (laughs) They might be some dark deep cuts. I don't know. Uh, anyways, Big Show comes down, takes out everybody. So here, this is a weird sequence. So Big Show comes out, yeah, right, yeah. He clears everybody. He yeah. clears them out. Yeah. 
And then the gun club comes out. And I'm like, why are they there? Yeah. The factory, like five deep, just got taken down by this dude. The, my favorite little detail is after the gun club come in. I mean, it, the, the parts make sense once you see how it all ends. So the, the yeah, gun club sure. come in. And, and QT, like, awkwardly gets on the apron with a chair. Billy Gunn takes a swing at him. And QT tumbles off the apron. And yeah. the chair ends up in the ring. So important yeah. detail. So QT, okay. he, he, makes his, he takes his leave. He goes up the ramp. And then seemingly out of nowhere, Billy Gunn just takes that chair and just clocks Paul White right in the hip from behind. Paul White looks like he's crying because, you know, he's got, they're really selling the hip thing. There's two things. They're selling the, the hip thing, and, and, and Paul White was really selling the betrayal by Billy Gunn because Billy Gunn's nightmare family. Yeah. Well, he was. Now, he, I guess, now he's, he's something factory. else. He's part of the factory. He's I factory guess. now. Why would you ever join that group of losers? They're terrible. <laughs> They're absolutely terrible. I ter- have no answer for you. Maybe because Austin like knocked himself out last week. Maybe he was but, like, but his brothers like undefeated. They're like he's got like twenty nine to zero. He's like, hey, you guys need more training. Austin just knocked himself out on a Luthez press. It's like, okay, what what do you want us to do? We're sending you to the factory. <laughs> yeah, we're sending you to the factory. <sighs> but Colton's undefeated. I don't care. Really, tell you put two apart. Um. Yeah, that was kind of stupid. This was not this this, and it's the the great thing is too. It's as if before QT made his way out there, that Tony was like, "Listen, you guys have three minutes, not a second longer, <laughs> for a segment well, that really should have been like seven. This this could lead to one of two things. So you got this is their attempt to have uh, uh kind of even the odds a bit because if you just send Paul White out there at 100% against QT Marshall. That should be a 15-second match. You know what I mean? So maybe it's an opportunity for QT to try to make this competitive instead of 15 seconds, maybe a minute and a half. Yeah, okay. Or they could say, due to the injury sustained on Dynamite, Paul White can't make it, but he's found someone to take his place. Out comes Paul uh, Paul, Paul Shear. Adam Shear. Paul Shear. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> he's on the piano. <laughs> um, Adam Shear, yeah, uh, Braun Strowman, yeah, yeah. And then um, he'll destroy uh, QT in like ten seconds. Yeah, <laughs> quicker than that. and Billy, and yeah, uh, yeah. and Austin. Austin will take himself out. Yeah, <laughs> he'll yeah. run away and knock himself out. <laughs> God, it's playing him. I got to make a gif of that because. That shit was too. He did a Luthes press and knocked himself out. <laughs> Not sure he knocked himself out. Pretty sure he moved afterwards. Bro, Steve. I'm going to do. No, listen, man. I'm going to send you that. I'm going to make a gif out of that because I think I still have the file. All right. And I'm going to send it to you. That dude does not look around. I swear I remember <laughs> him kind of not... looking back like that anyway. He, he, that's just where his head ended up. Uh, oh, after, man. After that, we had the uh, Britt Baker interview. Uh, said she's going to add a little star power to the Casino Battle Royal by having two entrants in it, uh, mm-hmm. two huge superstars. They're standing next to her, Rebel, mm-hmm. Jamie Hayter. She says, uh, and if either of them, well, if Jamie wins, she's not going to come after her. The title is safe. And then she yeah. mentions that she had, there has been a new huge free agent signing with AEW, signing a long-term deal, and it's her. She's that signee. And she says Tony Khan has allowed her to make a match, and she's booked Jamie Hader and Rebel to take on Chris Statlander on Rampage. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had Ty Conti versus uh, Penelope Ford. Penelope Ford. <laughs> Penelope. Uh, and uh, before the bell even rings, Ty does a fun splash to both Ford and uh, and Bunny. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then we get going up. There's uh, Towards the finish, there's all sorts of shenanigans with Bunny coming up on the apron and then uh, what's her face? Uh, Ty Conti gets out of the way, and then uh, there's a roll up situation where Ty gets the roll up on Penelope Ford mm-hmm. to get the win here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Ford and the Bunny attack Ty after the bell, and Anna Jay makes her return to make the same. Anna Jay's big return. Yeah, that, that was, was awesome. Yeah, that and she's really in the Casino stuff. Battle Royal. Correct. Uh, after that, we had a Thunder Rosa interview, or what was supposed to be a Thunder Rosa interview. It's interrupted very quickly. Uh, she's talking about the, the battle Royal mm-hmm. and then Jade and Nyla show up with their respective managers. Thunder Rose is like, man, you guys are trying to intimidate me. And then she says, well, might as well go down swing. And so she starts launching into them. They beat her down. And then, uh, uh, Mark Sterling's like, okay, save a little bit of it for, uh, for Sunday. And, uh, and then he said something else and they all just departed. Yeah. 
Yep, that's pretty much it. And then we had our main, main event. event. This was a hell of a match. Yeah. It was like basically impossible to write notes for most of it because it was a lot of it was Nick Jackson, Matt Jackson, and uh, the Lucha Brothers doing insane stuff. I don't ever w- write notes for this because it's just you got to see it. You got to see it to believe it. It's so much fun. Yeah. The Young Bucks got the win in the end with a Melter driver. Not a lot of, unless I'm mistaken, it was going too fast. Not a lot of shenanigans in terms of that finish. It's not like Cutler was out there cold spraying people, wasn't he? Cutler, was there was one point where the Lucha Brothers were looking for their finish, uh, and then Cutler got involved there, and that led ah, to the, okay. the, the Good Brothers hitting Phoenix with the Magic Killer. But Lucha Soros okay. broke up that pin. Okay. And it was right. pretty quickly thereafter that uh, uh, that uh, Phoenix escaped the BTE trigger, uh, hits that double handspring cutter looking for a springboard splash, and the Bucks catch him, hit him with a Melson mm-hmm. driver for the win. And after the match, Kenny makes his way ringside. He gets on the mic. He tells the elite uh, to 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 get him out of there. Let's talk about Jurassic Express. So Gallows and Anderson hit Luchasaurus with a magic killer through a table that had kind of magically sprung up there ringside. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> And then uh, Kenny gets in Jungle Boy's face, says he's nobody. Christian hits the ring. He spears Nick, goes after Kenny. The elite overwhelm him. Cutler brings in uh, like a dozen kendo sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Kenny's like, you fell right into my trap. Says, I had a great (laughs) meeting with Tony Khan today, but you got to be careful with your personal items. He says, Don, you have the key to the production truck to lower the cage, right? Lower the cage. Lower the cage. So the cage starts uh, descending. Uh, and uh, he tells he gets in Christian's face. I'm just getting started. Hits with the kendo. Uh, some of the members of the face locker room, uh, Elite Hunter, Frankie Kazarian, Dante Martin, Orange Cassidy, make their way ringside to try to get in the, into the ring, climb the cage and such. They're all fended off by Brandon Cutler and Cold Spray. Eventually, though, the Lucha Brothers are handcuffed to the ropes, and Nick's just going back and forth, super kicking them. And then Kenny's like, hold, hold on, hold on. Get Christian. And so Kenny and the Bucks hit Christian with a BTE trigger. And uh, Kenny tells Christian that he's sorry that he has to do this to him. And he's still talking. The beatdown is still continuing as the show goes off the air. Yeah. Also, Kenny had dyed his hair. Yeah. Seemingly black and maybe some purple in it, too. He looked pretty ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah. So Christian's going to get he's going to get his own. Um, Oh, here's the thread. I have it right here. It's funny. I didn't realize. Oh, I had already put up a thread. Okay, cool. I, I knew I put up a thread. Yeah, I got it right here. Questions. And then, like, I couldn't find it, and then it just popped up. So oh, good for that's me. Weird. Yay. I'm awesome. Uh, Patrick Sparks says Lucha Bros got the winning go home math tonight. Who do you think gets it on Friday? My bet, my bet right now is going to be Christian gets the go home math on Kenny. On Friday, mm-hmm. but for Lucha Brothers and Young Bucks, I this feel was, like this was this the was the go home math. Yeah, that's my guess. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Uh, Crispy McGrizzle, would you guys Great like name. to see Andrade help the Lucha Brothers win the tag titles, leading to the Elite versus Andrade and the Lucha Brothers? This could also lead to a returning unstable pack, like when he lost the Cruiserweight title. Now, if the Andrade pack matches off, it's not happening. I mean, I don't even know if Andrade's going to be there. Yeah, so uh, did he? I'm, I know I literally read it. In Tony's tweet, did he say due to travel issues? Okay, yes. so it's unspecified as to who was having exactly travel issues. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, if, yeah, if... If Andrade wins, I think probably the most likely scenario is Andrade. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. If Andrade helps the Lucha Bros win these titles, I don't see that happening because that's just like, a bad guy helping good guys win titles off bad guys, thus turning those good guys into bad guys. You're just having titles go from heels to heels. Well, I'm, he, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, this is my last point though, because I was thinking about this too. Let's run down these matches really quick. A face is going to win the battle royal. Mm-hmm. Uh, a heel is going to win the title. the The, the main event is going to be CM Punk. No. No matter who wins that, that's a face win, right? Yeah. But it's going to yeah. be punk. It's going to be the go. It's going to be yeah. the last thing people see. It's going to be huge, right? Yeah. 
Um, we'll probably get we'll get Daniel Bryan as a big face moment, big good happy moment. Otherwise, there's a lot of heels going over here. Miro's going to win. Yeah. Um, well, Mox is going to win. Mox is going to be cheered, but he's playing the heel here. He's talking about executing an old man, but he's going to be cheered. So yeah, it's kind of a wash, right? Britt's going to win. She's a heel. Yeah. Although people like Britt. Yeah. Um, but still, she's going to play this as a heel. Yes. Uh, Kenny's going to win. Uh, what else is on the card that I'm not thinking of? Uh, I mean, the kickoff match doesn't really matter. Um, Andrade versus Pac was probably going to be Andrade. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got Jericho and MJF. Too. Yeah, Jericho's probably That's a big win face that. win. That's yeah. a face win. That's a Jericho win. <clears throat> I feel like in order to even it out, it wouldn't shock me if a title change happened because no other titles are going to change hands also. Like Britt's not losing. No, nope, Miro's, Miro's not, losing. not losing. Kenny's not Kenny's losing. not losing. That leaves the that leaves the Lucha Bros. That's a huge face moment. Mm-hmm. And I think in order for that to remain pure, Andrade can't have any of that. Yeah, probably. So, I mean, the only way they can get around it maybe is if Andrade does it on his own behalf, not like there's an actual alliance. Hey, I'm trying to recruit you to join you know, me. I'll help you win these tag titles. And they and they push the story a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So I don't know. I kind of feel like now that I think about it, Lucha Brothers are probably going to win. But there's a bunch of face moments already happening. Like you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jericho's a big one. Daniel Bryan, if he shows up, is a big one, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, Gregory Fiella with the Britt Baker troll tonight. That means Adam Cole is debuting Sunday or is at least signed with AEW, <laughs> right? Not a given. Not a given. Just based on that alone. Uh, Moses Aposa says, do you think there is any chance? I think Chugs is happy streaming. Do you think there's any chance for a punk heel turn this week? No. 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 He, there's nothing he could do. He couldn't be a heel. In Chicago. Unless you start talking. The only way it might happen is you start talking crap about Chicago. If 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 Daniel Bryan comes out and CM Punk gives him a GTS. What do you think? What do you think of his what do you think of his GTS? Oh, it looked fine. It looked better than the one he did when he had the mask on. You think so? Yeah. I think they were kind of on par, dude. I think they were kind of on par. Uh, Dog authority figure. How kayfabe will the Rhodes reality show be? And which would you rather? What a great question. Which would you rather watch that or Ms. and Mrs.? For me, it's not even close. I'd rather watch Ms. and Mrs. Ms. is actually very, all the stuff I've seen from that show, he is very entertaining. They both have great chemistry. Mm-hmm. That's true. From a train wreck perspective, I wouldn't mind watching this Rhodes to the top show. Because I feel like it's just going to be a big ego boot. Like, I don't know if Cody and Brandy are going to come off as likable at all. Yeah. They think they will. Yeah. I don't think they're going to. Yeah, that could be, that could be an <laughs> issue. Uh, Eddie Brock's Venom. If Cole, Brian, Ruby, Buddy all show up at All Out on one night, is that too much? Because would that take away from one of the others who show up or outshine someone else's debut? So let's say for the sake of Eddie Brock's venom, this is a question. All four of these things do happen. Mm-hmm. Cole happens. I think if Cole debuts and ruins Brian's debut, I think that's a that's a huge moment. I think that's great. That's mm-hmm. like so much buzz coming out of that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ruby is a separate thing. I think Ruby has like obviously less big name value but i feel like she is very appealing in many different ways people want to see the women's division get more of a shine Mm -hmm. her vignettes have been next level great um and so i think there i think that that's a big moment in its own way Mm -hmm. uh and then i think yeah buddy i think you know people be happy to see buddy I think people be happy to see Buddy. I don't think it's too much. I don't think it's too much. I no, think I they think, all kind of even themselves out. I think if, especially if you kind of pace the show so everybody gets their moment, apart mm-hmm. from Cole and Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, if that's the situation where Brian Danielson shows up and Adam Cole ruins it, that's playing into a story you're telling. So that's fine. But as long as. And it's two, one moment, right? Exactly. It's like one moment. Yeah. And as long as the other two are, are spaced out so everybody gets their time, then it should be fine. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, Anthony R., when Chris Jericho goes into the WWE Hall of Fame, do you think they'd be petty enough and not let the AEW roster sit in the floor with them side by side, or would they make them sit in the cheap seats? I mean, I don't think the AEW roster would be invited. So they'd have to buy tickets. Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't think the AEW roster would be there. Mm-mm. Uh David Matushik. How often should traps be sprung in wrestling after last night? Like Kenny's trap with a cage? Did he mean tonight? Maybe. Because yeah, he did say he said, I sprung a trap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the more the better. I like traps. Totally. They're they're fun. They you know. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. It's like uh, the Bond movie. Totally. Uh Dan Barber, it was a super cool moment, but do you feel like it was it was a mistake to let Punk get physical before all out? Oh man, people want to see that shit. Yeah. And now like Sting really Sting was really into it. And now that you don't have to do we've seen the GTS, we see him do it. Now we have to sit through the match and think, is he gonna be able to pull this off? I'll still probably because he's gonna be like, you know, gassed. Yeah. His legs are going to be heavy before he has that GTS. But luckily for him, Darby Allen's like 98 pounds. So, like, that's easy. It's like I'm getting a little kid up there. It's like you're at home with your nephew and you're just goofing around. <laughs> that's so messed up. <laughs> but it's kind, of, it's kind of true. I'm sure he'll be fine. He'll oh, be fine. man. Phil will be fine. Who did he get up there? Did he get up Garcia? Uh, it was uh, Chase Parker. Oh, okay. Okay. He's a little bit bigger in Darby Allen. Yeah. 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 All right. Anyways, <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.